Ida Lupino in Star in the West on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. First, here is Dane Whitman. Decorators and homemakers tell us that soft-toned pastel walls are the vogue these days because they're practical as well as beautiful. Walls that are dark and dingy detract from the appearance of a room, and they absorb the light as well. You can have a smart, modern home by using DuPont Speed Easy Wall Finish. Speed Easy is a resin oil emulsion paint to thin with water. It is easy to apply to almost any interior wall surface, and it dries in less than one hour to a beautiful, rich, oil-type finish. Furthermore, it costs less than $3 to redecorate the average room in one color. Speed Easy is one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. Just 100 years ago this past week, Texas joined the Union. Tonight, for this centennial anniversary, we present a story not so much historical as human. A story of the kind of devotion and labor and love which wrought the miracles of the American frontier. The DuPont Company presents Star in the West, with Ida Lupino as Nancy Dale, on the Cavalcade of America. Mr. Dale, this is our dance, I believe. Nancy, I was wondering if you'd forgotten your father. Not at all, and he's quite the handsomest gentleman here. Oh, thank you, my dear. I appreciate the compliment, but I'm afraid my years aren't adequate to a dance. That's nonsense. Come along, Father. No, my dear, I'm sure there are younger men who are both lighter with their step and compliments. Are you refusing me? Oh, no, not exactly, Nancy, but uh, there's Jeff Rawlings. Who has had three waltzes already. Well, uh, Kent Winthrop. Who keeps time by counting aloud. Will Evans. Who confuses the ballroom with the fox hunt. It shows up in a dancing he can't <laughs> Then who shall it be? Um, that man with red hair talking with Mrs. Cromwell. Him? Visitor here, Nancy, from Pennsylvania. I want to meet him. Nancy. Is that ladylike? No, but it's womanlike. What? Did I send you to school abroad for six years to have you come home uh, a minx? Uh, besides, it's only a visitor here. That's all the more reason we should make him feel welcome. Mrs. Cromwell will talk him to death and father right, you All right, all right. Come along, Nancy. I beg your pardon, Mrs. Cromwell. A and you, sir. Certainly, sir. Ah, oh, Mr. Dale. You promised me a dance, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, did I? Of course you did, Father. Uh, now, what? you two run along. I'm sure the next dance will be a waltz. And you loved waltz, Father, remember? But I... Uh, 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 Mrs. Cromwell. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Nancy, you take good care of Mr. Homer. He's very charming. Even if he does come from... Uh, from, uh, Pennsylvania. Of course. I know it was some foreign place. And now, Mr. Dale, shall we show these young people what grace is? An honor, Mrs. Robert. Do you dance, Mr. Homer? Well, after a fashion, Miss Nancy. May I? Why, Mr. Homer, of course. dream, but it can be realized someday. And you're going to try to make it come true. Yes, I am. You see, Miss Nancy, Texas is going to be, well, is a wonderful country. There are rolling hills and immense unbroken plains that stretch from one horizon to the other. That sounds lonely. It is lonely now, but someday there'll be cities, big cities humming with trade. And those plains and hills will be filled with farms and ranches and cattle. And and how do you fit into that picture? Well, I told you. I'm a school teacher. They'll be needing schools in Texas. You see, civilization stops where education does. You know, Mr. Homer, I, I think you're quite wonderful. Well, I, Miss Nancy, I... I embarrassed you, didn't I? Well, it, it was sudden. I'm sorry. Oh, what I meant was, all my life, I've had this. Big house, servants, anything I wanted. And the people I've met have been just like Comfortable, self-satisfied, living in a rich, developed land. I went to school abroad for six years, and there I learned to be a lady. And the result is quite wonderful. Is it? I'm not sure about that, Mr. Homer. Sometimes I think my forefathers rather disapprove of gay dancers and hunts. And you? And I. 
secret. That's why I said you're quite wonderful, Mr. Homer. You're willing to give up a life in a land that's already developed. A one in a wild new Texas. Miss Nancy, it's not being wonderful. It's just... Just having faith. And I like that even better. Oh, really, Mr. Homer? Your flattery sounds like a Virginian. It's meant as such, Miss Nancy. Look at all this, Nancy. These hills, that stream. Houses, beautiful and white against the green. Someday Texas will be like this. You're, you're anxious to go, aren't you? I, I will be leaving in a few days. Oh? Oh, I'll be sorry, Paul. What are you thinking about, Paul? Nancy, you said the other day that you'd be sorry to see me leave. Yes, I will. Why? Oh, Paul, don't you know? Yeah, I think I do. But I can't ask you to go out there with me. Then I'll ask you to take me. I'm sorry, Father. Are you enjoying the nap so much? Yes, I was. Then you can go right back to sleep after Paul talks with you. Oh? How do you do, Mr. Horner? <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mr. Dale. Nancy, what have you got to talk about? Uh, Paul wants to talk with you, Father, so I'll be out in the garden. <clears throat> well, Mr. Horner, what is it? I, uh... <clears throat> it's no good beating around the bush, sir. I, I want to marry Nancy. So I guessed. You've been visiting here quite a bit, haven't you? That Nancy's invitation, sir. Just so i Nancy's only 19. I doubt if she really knows her own mind. Oh, I think she does, sir. You've known her three months, while I've known her only 19 years. Of course, you know her far better than I do. Mr. Dale, I, I don't think there's any need for sarcasm. We can discuss this like two gentlemen. I... Very well, sir. You asked me for Nancy's hand. Well, what are your prospects? I think you know, sir, I intend to go to Texas and... and subject my daughter to a wild, roughenly country. You forget, Mr. Dale, that this was a wild, roughenly country when your forefathers brought their wives That's here. That's beside the point. It is the point. What are we to do? Let a great new country lie in waste because people are afraid of it? Where would any of this have been, sir, if the first Dale or the first Raleigh or Winthrop had stopped... I won't hear any more, sir. My answer is no. I can't take that answer without argument, Mr. Dale. I have a right to present my case. You have no right in this house. Mr. Dale, I refuse to be talked to. Oh, father. You two quarreling, my drunken stable boy. Nancy, I'm your father. I haven't forgotten that. Nor have I forgotten that I love Paul. Yeah, it's a silly delusion. You don't know your own mind. I'm not a child. Since neither of you seem able to agree... Since you're unable to talk it over like gentlemen, I'll decide for both of you. Paul, I'll go with you as your wife. Very well, Nancy. Mr. Horner, you heard her. There's no more to be said. Oh, Father, forget that silly pride for a moment. One of us must remember it. I, I'm sorry I lost my temper, Mr. Dane. It's quite all right, sir. Nancy, you may take Mirabel and Jeb. You may have the new carriage and four of the horses. Also... What household good you prefer? I don't want any of those things, Father. Please, all I want is for you to understand that I love Paul. That can't be changed. Then shall we say that I do understand? Oh, please, and Father. And that I want you to have those things. There's nothing more to be said. But there is. Not on my part. Good day, Mr. Homer. Nancy. Nancy, darling. Maybe you should think it over for a while. Oh, but I, I have thought about it, Paul. Ever since we met. I love Virginia, my home, my father. But I've always felt that there's more to this country than just... Well, just these small things one can reach out and touch. I didn't know what it was until you told me, Paul. Until you told me about Texas. And your faith, your belief in it. Then I knew. In what way, Nancy? Well, I, I knew there was something bigger, Paul. Much bigger. 
And it's rising out of the West. A new country into which we can put ourselves, our children, into which we can put the same energy and faith that went into the making of the East. There's a new star rising, Paul. A star in the West. Here come Mr. Paul and Jeb. Now remember, Mirabelle, let me do the talking. Yes, but Mr. Paul sure going to be upset when he sees what you done done. Nancy. Nancy, what... Darling, what is all this? Lord, it sure looks like something happened is bad. Nonsense, Jeb. We're going to Texas in the right way. Well, Nancy, what have you done? Where's the carriage, the horses? Paul, please, down here. Miss Nancy, what is that thing there? Jeb, that's a covered wagon. Lord, are we going to ride in that? <laughs> Now, Nancy, what did you do? Well, look, Paul, when we leave New Orleans, we'll be getting into country where there are no roads. Well, I know that, but... And the carriage would have been useless, so I traded it for the wagon. You trip. Yeah, and the other things, the curtains, the silverware you took along? Everything's with... traded. Traded for things we'll really need. Plow, seed, corn, wheat, and oxen. But I wanted to keep those things for you, Nancy. I wanted to make some kind of a home, uh, a little like the one you had. I know you did, Paul. But it would have looked a little silly. Fine silver and silk draperies in the log cabin. No, Paul. We can do without them. Now we have the things we really need and can use. Oh, but Nancy, I... Now help me pack. You see, we've got to leave soon because our first boy has to be born in Texas. <laughs> Should be almost there, Jim. Yes, Mr. Paul. We should almost be there. Seems like we done come across the whole country. <laughs> and Mirabelle? Yes, Mr. Paul. How's Miss Nancy? Oh, she's fine, Mr. Paul, but you know we got to stop soon. Yeah, I know, but we're not quite there. And Miss Nancy done told me to tell you that you ain't supposed to stop till we're there. Think we're going to make it, Mr. Paul? Oh, I don't know, Jeb. I don't know. Go as far as we can and stop when Miss Nancy... <laughs> yes, Mr. Paul, yes. Uh, what are you going to call me? I don't know, Jed. But what name sounds good? Uh, let's see now. Let's see if we could... Oh, Lordy, Mr. Paul. You two ain't got nothing to say about it. Miss Nancy done got a name for it. Oh? <laughs> what is it, Mirabel? She gonna call him Texas, Mr. Paul. <laughs> But what are we going to do with this girl? <laughs> that we'll leave up to Miss Nancy, too. <laughs> oh, oh, who's huh? that, Mr. Paul? I don't know, Jim. Oh, who are they? Hey, Jim, take one of these guns. Yes, sir. Hello there. Hello. Who are you? My name's Paul Homer. Well, mine's Jones, Jack Jones. How do you do? Well, now, don't you know no better than to be going along with night? Oh, this here's Big Jim Brock. Howdy. How are you? Look at here. Where are you heading? Texas. For Texas? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Homer, did you cross a creek a while back? About ten miles, yes. Then, mister, you crossed over into God's own country. Homer, welcome to Texas. We's here. You sure? <laughs> Holy Brown, what's that? Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul, come look at Texas. Uh, uh, Texas? <laughs> well, uh, gentlemen, I, I haven't got any stogies to pass out, but I, I just became a father. <laughs> Listening to Ida Lupino as Nancy Dale with Bill Johnstone as Paul in Star in the West and the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. The second part of our story opens seven years after Nancy and her husband Paul first came to Texas. A party is in progress in Horner Barn. Yes, I'm glad you could come. Oh, I wouldn't have missed it for anything. My, when I look around this barn and see what you and Paul did. Oh, no, what everyone did. You and Jack, Jim, Brock, the rest of the neighbors. We all built it, there. Just as we're all building Texas. Well, it's been hard sometimes. But worth it. Worth all the trouble and work. Heartbreak for seven years. Nancy, ain't that Paul coming now? Why, yes, it is. He couldn't be home this early if there wasn't something wrong. Paul! Paul! Nancy, Bess. 
I've got to stop this party right now. Why, Paul, what's the matter? You're here. Uh, folks! Just a minute. Now, hold the music, boys. Folks, I hate to be busting up a party in my own place. But I've got some news that can't wait. I've been south all day on a surveying trip, and I, uh... I got news that a Mexican army on the Santa Ana wiped out the Texas garrisons at Goliad and the Alamo. Now, wait, wait. That Mexican army is coming on. And Sam Houston... Sam Houston's given orders. All families, women and children, have to move north and east. All able-bodied men must make their way to San Jacinto to join Sam Houston's Texas army. That's all. Oh, no, Paul. No, it can't be true. It is, darling. You've got to go. And do you? San Jacinto. And do you want me to leave all this? All that I've fought for? All these years of fighting the earth to grow our crops? Building a home, losing it, and building again to raise our children. Nancy, we're still going to fight for it. But you can't stay here. And I'll go with you. No, that's impossible. You must go with the others. With Bess and the other women. But, Paul... It's settled, Nancy. Uh, Jeb? Jeb? Yes, sir, Mr. Paul? You go with Miss Nancy in Texas. Mirabel, too. I can fight, Mr. Paul. I know, Jeb. Nancy and the boy will need you. That's all. Yes? Paul, you'll leave right away? Yes, Hurry back. Oh, Paul. Paul. Jeff. Jeff, is that you? Yes, Miss Nancy. Did you see anyone? Ain't a soul around, Miss Nancy. All the men going off to fight Santa Ana and everybody else in Seattle. out. Miss Nancy. Maybe we should have gone with the others. Then three days, huh? What are we going to do if Santa Anna come here? Oh, I don't know, Jeff. Fight, I guess. Us three fight? Oh, man, it's going to be a bad thing. Oh, what was that? Shooting. Jeff. Yes, sir? Put out the lance quickly. Get your gun. Get to the back window. I'll stay at the front. Move right outside, making it bright like this. Don't shoot until you have to, Jeff. Nancy, you can't shoot no gun. You just can't. Be quiet, Marcel. It's Nancy. Somebody coming on a horse. Lord, he's a right good target here to move. He fired that shot because he saw the light. Jeff. Mirabelle. It's Paul. It's Paul. Oh, thank the Lord. Oh, thank the Lord. It is. <sighs> Mr. Paul, they'll come back. Paul. Paul. Oh, my darling, Paul. Oh, you're a fool. You stayed. Oh, I couldn't leave, Paul. I sent Texas, but... But you're all right. Yes, Nancy. We licked him at San Jacinto. Captured Santa Ana. Oh, Paul, please hold me tight. Tighter, darling. But I'm telling you, Paul, it ain't right. We come into this country and make something of it. And as soon as it's fit for living, some crackpot is all for getting into the Union. Look at it this way, Jim. If we go into the Union, we'll be better able to build schools. We'll have a whole government behind We've us. We've got a government now. But this is 1845, Jim. And Nancy and I have been in Texas 16 years. Surely we have as much right to be called Texans as anyone. And we don't Miss think... Nancy, I can't argue with fancy talk like his. You tell him that it ain't right. Well, Jim, I'm just as proud of Texas as you are. I felt the same thing you did when the Lone Star flag went up. Hey, you see, Paul? No, Jim. That's not an argument against joining the Union. It's an argument for it. Well, uh, I'm turned if I see that. Well, to the east, Jim, a state. They were built by men like you and Paul and Jack Jones. By the same kind of men who died in the Alamo. For what they thought was right. They thought something else, Jim. They thought and they knew that there was strength in Union. Men who love liberty and freedom and democracy would and should always band together to protect those things. You see, Jim? Sure, I see that. And we have the same decision to make, Jim. The decision to stand weakly as a separate, smaller democracy or join the greater and help build a new nation. We're Texans, Jim, but we're Americans, too. <laughs> Mary 
Here, Adele. Yes, Miss Nancy. Mr. Paul will be home late. The food warms on him. Yes, ma'am. Oh, is that him coming now? Why, no. No, it's not. It's Mr. Jones. Hello there, Jack. Howdy, Mrs. Hallman. Oh, Mrs. Hallman. Jack, what's the matter with you? Well, I, I just come from the election, Nancy. And... Oh, oh, the vote went the other way. We're not joining the union. It ain't that. Uh, uh, we went in all right. Big majority. That's wonderful. Mirabelle, Jeb, Texas is a state in the union. Oh, Jack Paul will be so happy, or maybe he knows already. Yes. He, uh, he found out the boy. But, well, Jack, what are you trying to say? Nancy was, he was riding along, hooping it up after the election. And I, they're bringing him back here for a while. Bringing him back? He got thrown. We was riding over the bridge at Taylor Street. It had been all right if he'd have got thrown in the water, but... Not now, Jack. Thank you. No, thank you. I'll be alone for a little while. Tina will return to our cavalcade microphone in a moment. Now, here is Jane Whitman. When we hear the word company, the DuPont Company, for instance, we think of a certain number of men and women at a certain place making products. In the case of the DuPont Company, chemical products. But it is also possible to think of the company in another way, as a library or a reservoir of knowledge and experience. During the war, this was made very clear. Again and again... When there was a need for a special gun or electronic tube or a means of combating tropical disease, the job was given to a company whose experience was most likely to provide the answer. Take the struggle to conquer malaria, which every year attacks up to 300 million people throughout the world. During the war, it was impossible to get quinine from the Dutch East Indies. So the government sponsored the program to find something as good as quinine or better. As part of the program, the DuPont Company supplied Dr. E.K. Marshall of the Johns Hopkins Medical School with over 2,200 compounds, many of them put together by our chemists just for the purpose. Other companies and government chemists provided samples for a total of 14,000. As a result, the Johns Hopkins and other laboratories were enabled to study hundreds of compounds that had never been tested before 
for their anti-malarial value. And shortly after New Year's Day, Washington announced the discovery of SN-7618, superior to quinine and aspirin. The new compound relieves malaria with a shorter treatment and need not be given so often. Another case was that of Dr. Kurt T. Richter, who turned to DuPont when he was investigating the action of various chemicals on rat behavior. Our DuPont laboratories were able to supply him with a number of compounds for trial. One of these, ANTU, alpha naphthyl thiourea, turned out to be an effective rat poison. ANTU, to quote Dr. Richter, has been proved through extensive laboratory tests and also by controlled field trials in a large city to be an effective and specific poison for the Norway rat, a very common and destructive rat throughout the world, unquote. The Norway rat is the ordinary gray rat which spreads cyber fever. Compounds to fight malaria, compounds to kill disease-carrying rats are as important in time of peace as they are in time of war. And the knowledge and experience of companies in private industry are as valuable in peacetime as in war. For they are the real source of products. The products which, in our case, are DuPont, better things for better living through chemistry. Once again, our star, Ida Mattino. Well, Miss Lucino, I suppose you know the eyes of Texas were upon you tonight. Jane, I enjoyed being a part of tonight's cavalcade. And paying tribute to the men and women who made Texas not only the biggest state in the Union, but one of the finest. And I'm sure that Texas feels as we do, Miss Lucino. That you gave not only a splendid performance as Miss Nancy, but also a gracious tribute. And I'm certain that your acting in the forthcoming Warner Brothers picture, Devotion, will give more cause for cheers, not only in Texas, but all over the country. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Jane. Good night. Listen in next week when the Cavalcade of America will star Brian Dunleavy in a thrilling story about an incident which gave American industry its lifeblood. It's called The Case of the Tremendous Trifle. <laughs> Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. The Cavalcade play was written by Bernard Grain. In tonight's cast with Mrs. Pino were William Johnstone as Paul, Francis X. Bushman as Dale, Lillian Randolph as Mirabelle, Earl Smith as Jeb, and Ed Max, Margaret Brayton, Ruth Parrott, and Franklin Parker. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to Brian Dunleavy in the case of the tremendous trifle and the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.